It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's talk about the best alternatives that are truly free money That's or right. things that you ought to consider. We think that the best ways to pay for college are not Roths, not life insurance. Student loans are fine, but not the best. The best way, just like you said, is free money. So let's let's get into these free money things. Bo, I felt like here's a guy, which y'all y'all should know. This is a walk down memory lane. I hired Bo right out of college. Yep. Bo was young. Really young. He's um because he, I think you made him through college in like three years, three and a half years. Or yeah, something. we went through I went through pro- Fairly quickly. Here's the other thing. Bo just had a birthday like last week. That's right. So if you do the math on that, he's a late August birthday. That's right. That makes him the dead youngest kid in the class. Yep. Man, your parents just hit you on no, all things. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't ideal. I dead think. youngest. I mean, you youngest kid in the class, and it just and then you did it fast. That's a, that's amazing. But you, here's the truth of the matter. This is what I'm getting to. Bo actually took a pay cut <laughs> when he took his job with me. Is that true or true or false? Uh, That is a true statement. Meaning you had so many grants and scholarships, you were actually making money off of going to college. Yeah, again, I was I was pretty fortunate that uh, I was unfortunate. Or unfortunate. (laughs) (laughs) I was pretty fortunate. I was unfortunate. So there were a lot of uh, scholarships. There were a lot of grants. A lot of the grants were refundable, and so. Uh, I went to the University of Georgia. When I went to the University of Georgia, we had the Hope Scholarship, which covered a big portion of tuition and that sort of thing. So a lot of the grant money and a lot of the scholarship money I had not only would cover all the additional fees and meal plans and all that stuff, but I would actually get a little bit extra uh, money every semester. So I would I would tell you guys, this is something that, that I was always amazed about. There are so many different scholarships out there, trade organization, schools. If you go out there and figure out you just have to go turn the stones over. That's, that's, right. that's the truth of the matter. You might have to write an essay or two. You know, grants, it's based upon needs and things like that. Yep. So, if you, you, But the, definitely the scholarships has an element of the harder you work, the more benefit that's you can exactly help right. pay for your college. And these grants, I know I served on some scholarship committees for nursing programs and other things with a, a hospice that I did a mm-hmm. lot of volunteer in. And we didn't have that many people that would apply. And these were like $2,500 grants. That, I mean, the scholarships that we were giving out. That was the second thing I was going to say. Now, obviously, if you're someone out there who has need-based aid, right? Like your, your family has a very low EFC or whatever the uh, expected family contribution. It, you know, it's not hard. And the, the schools will try to help you with that. If you're listening to the money I show and maybe you're someone who's had some success and so your child is not going to qualify for need-based aid, they have to be willing to put in the work to go pursue these scholarships and these grants. But what's amazing is not a ton of people do it. We've That's talked exactly to people right. all the time. I said, oh yeah, I wrote this one essay and I had to give a presentation and I got $2,000 a year towards my college education. If you're just like most things in life, if your student is willing to just go a little bit further, take that little extra step, it's amazing what a financial impact they can have on them. And then I want to do these last two that we had, three things we had on here. Work study. Mm -hmm. There are jobs you can do on campus that potentially could help lower your costs. Meaning you you put in the time, you put in the elbow grease, and then the college will, you know, like being a TA. Did bus bus did bus driver do that? I just got paid. It was the <laughs> highest paying job that's, on I the was university. Sitting, that's what I was in there but thinking. I was not like TAs is what I'm thinking about. When you do a TA yeah. type thing, you can do a work study program where if you will serve or do some type of work on campus, they will give you credit sure. towards tuition. Yep. Um, there's also this is one by the way, this is intern, even though he's not an intern, no, he's intern Daniel. Um, tuition reimbursement from employer daniels let us know when college he worked at Publix. yeah nope. and because he worked at Publix, and i think his minimum was 10 hours a week and he'd worked there for over a year that he got i mean it was several thousand it was, dollars it was of tuition meaningful. reimbursement because employers are allowed to get 52 five thousand two hundred fifty dollars a year the irs will let them an employer deduct that for employees and it's tax-free benefit for the employee and a deductible expense for the employer, it's a win-win all the way around. And that's why you'll see like a lot of the fast food joints do this, like McDonald's. I asked Daniel when he was doing the research on this, I said, how long do you have to work at uh, at McDonald's to qualify for the tuition reimbursement program? He said, 90 days. So you only have to go flip burgers for three months and then you qualify for their tuition reimbursement. He said they just dropped the hours too. I think it's down to 15 hours um, per pay, you know, per week. That's that's not the craziest thing. I know when I was in high school, I worked. I worked at Hardee's. I was a crew, you know, working the drive through. Uh-huh. I definitely was knocking out 15 hours a week, and I did that for years. I did that three or four years in high school. I could have easily 
qualified for some of this stuff if they offered it. So if you're a college student out there listening to this, or if you are the parent of a college student, someone is out there seeking internships, you know something that really might set your student or set you apart from your peers is if you approach your employer and say, hey, thank you so much for offering me this internship. I know about this program where instead of paying me, why don't you think about doing a tuition reimbursement? Here's how it all works out. That right there is just gonna set you up to look down. I mean, I, I know if one of our interns would have approached us with that, we'd have been like, oh, okay, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean that's, that's fantastic financial planning. So do, do those sort of things and that's a way to make yourself stand out. Hey, I, I had Daniel put this one on co-ops because I knew a lot of guys that were it went to Georgia Tech back, mm -hmm. you know, we're UGA guys, yep. but you know, we had nerdy friends at Georgia Tech. I still have nerdy and, Georgia um, Tech friends. And nerdy friends from Georgia Tech, a lot of them worked co-ops, meaning that they would take a semester where they go work for an employer and then they, that employer for that semester of work would then pay for the tuition. These were programs through the universities, pretty powerful. So I even knew kids at, at Georgia Tech and some of these very technical colleges, they went and did an internship. The employer loved them so much that they were trying to recruit them that they ended up paying for the rest of their college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff happens all yep. the time. So guys, go out there and go the road less traveled and see if there's sure. all kind of things that you can do to help you pay for and get that free money. Don't yep. pass up the free money.